All right, Ludwig, good to see you. What's up, dude? How are you? Got Mike Madsen here. How are you, Mike? Hi. VP of uh, Golf Ball R&D. Yep. Um, what was your major in college? Business marketing. Okay, so not a lot of science. <laughs> not a ton of science. Okay, no. well, uh, <laughs> we're going to put you through a science experiment here. Okay. Uh, a little golf ball testing. I'll let Mike... Uh, tee up the test. Yeah, he's, the, yeah. he's the rocket scientist. We're, we're going to talk about some golf ball aerodynamics today. So to kick okay. us off, let's grab one of your gamer balls and hit a couple shots. Sweet. Yeah, right. absolutely. What is your uh, normal ball flight, Ludwig? What are you looking for? Um, straight as I can. Really? No, you, you're not <laughs> looking to fade it or draw it? Um, I try to hit it pretty straight, to be honest with you. Um, whenever it gets a little windy, I always try to play the easy shot. So yeah. Very rarely I try to fight the wind too much. I just try to hit the straight shot, really. So if we got here a little bit right to left, I'll just try to hit a little bit of a draw. Okay. 177.5. All right. Ball speed? Yeah. Okay. Is that cruising altitude for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to get it a little bit higher maybe, but okay. I'm okay with that. All right. It'll work, it'll work for what we're doing today. Okay. I, I can assure you. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we, we got a good idea of what your ball looks like. Yeah. So first one we're going to have you hit is this guy right here. Okay. So what we got here, <laughs> it's Pro no V1 dimples. golf ball. Pro V1 in the sense that it's construction is exactly the same. Okay. Core, casing, cover, the materials, the paint, the size, the weight. Everything in this golf ball is Pro V1. The only thing missing is dimples. Dimples. All right? Okay. Tee it up, give it a rip. <laughs> I don't even know what to expect. Like I said, I'm not a rocket scientist. We're, we're looking for just a, another small draw. Small draw. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Went about 90 yards. <laughs> so. <laughs> As you can see, a big difference in terms of the shot, right? So, so yeah. for someone of your ball speed, if you're carrying it 280, 290 on a given day, a golf ball with no dimples is going to carry 110, 130 yards maximum. Yeah. So, so basically what's happening, when a smooth ball is coming in, the wind comes in, it hits the front edge of the golf ball, and it comes over the top, and it flies right off the back and separates off the golf ball like that, creating a wake behind the ball, just like a boat. Okay, this wake is an area of low pressure. So you have low pressure behind the ball, high pressure in front of the ball, high pressure pushes on low pressure and high pressure wins, right? Yeah. Tons of drag. Once you put dimples on a golf ball, uh -huh. it's gonna hit, it's gonna come over the top, but those dimples create that turbulent boundary layer, which essentially makes the air stick to the ball a little longer. So instead of flying right off the back like that, it actually wraps around the golf ball before it separates off the back end. So you really reduce that area of low pressure behind the ball, you reduce that low pressure, you reduce the differential between high and low, and that creates less drag on the golf ball. You get a lot more distance. Yeah. So the next okay. one we're gonna hit yeah. is that guy. A little bit. So same half thing. Half. Half and half. Now, important thing to remember throughout this experiment, since all of these are Pro V1 construction golf balls, yep. the launch condition coming off your club face is exactly the same for all of these balls. Yes. It's going to be your normal launch condition. Everything we're seeing is aerodynamics. So let's go ahead and tee it up and tee Which it up. Which side you want me to tee it up? Tee it up with the dimples on the left side. This way? Like, just like that. Okay, so you want me to hit yep. right here? Okay. Yep, perfect. Ludwig, what do you think is going to happen here? Dude, I have no clue. <laughs> All right, well, I gotta, you got to make I, a I guess. You think no it's clue. going left or you think it's going right? I wish I could tell you. Okay. Is it like playing a mud ball? I don't know. Well, that's what everybody asks. That's what everybody <laughs> asks. It's about a 50-50 shot. So. I think it's going to go <laughs> right. Okay. All right. But I have no reasoning for saying that. I uh, went left. Far left. He went hard In all left. fairness, I think most people always say right because of the mud ball phenomenon. But just so you, uh, <laughs> just to, just to let you know how it works, let's flip around the dimples and hit it, hit it the other way. One more way. way. 
So this one should go right. That was a, just for the last one, that was 172 ball speed, 153 total carry there. <laughs> Look at that, Same follows the dimples. The follows the dimples. That's so wild. what we have going on in this case is We've heard of we heard of drag force. We've yeah. talked about lift force, right? So we got lift and drag. This is a third force that we don't necessarily always talk about called transverse force. Uh -huh. So the force pushing side to side on the golf ball. We don't usually talk about it because ideally in golf ball design, that's always zero. We design dimples to be symmetric throughout the entire pattern. So we don't have any side to side forces. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's the same sort of thing. You're reducing that wake on one side of the ball it and it's it. getting pushed from high pressure to low pressure towards that. Interesting. Okay. So now we, sh we hit that one specifically so we can really get to this one. So I want you to take a look at this golf ball and okay. outside of the arrows, tell me if you notice anything different, anything strange about that ball. Dimple size? Uh, dimple pattern is probably a little different. It's an older Pro V1X uh, okay. dimple pattern, but it's a normal dimple pattern. In terms of the size of the layout, Could tell not you. much there, right? So let's go ahead and tee that one up with the black arrow. This way? Facing downrange. That way? Yep, you got it. Sheesh. 176 ball speed. Pretty interesting, huh? Let's okay. flip it around. 2,500 <laughs> hey. spin. <laughs> so I just want to say, yeah, that was not you. Thank you. Terrific shot. Let's flip yeah, it around. That, how, how'd that feel? <laughs> the swing. It didn't feel great. No? Oh, you meant the swing? Yeah, the no, swing. No, the swing felt fine. Right? Yeah. That's got to be shocking. You look I up. I started questioning myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you want. Our goal here is to do the opposite. Just sailing. So I went the other way. From my experience doing this, I'd say that you hit both of those perfectly. I mean, that was 176 ball speed. Yep. All right. Right? So what's going on here is we have, if you take that golf ball and you look down the center, the dimples on one side are a little bit shallower than the dimples on the other. Uh -huh. On the order of about a thousandth of an inch, maybe a little less than that. So okay. basically the paint layer basically a paint layer. And the reason we like to show this demonstration is because in our competitive ball lab back in R&D, we find competitive golf balls that have this phenomenon uh. out in the field. Yeah. Because if you think about uh, the manufacturing process, the manufacturing process, balls are going through the line, they're getting sprayed by two paint guns. If one of the paint guns gets clogged up and is only spraying one side of the ball, you're essentially putting a layer of paint that could be on the order of a thousandth of an inch on the golf yeah, that's ball. That's not what you want. And if it gets teed up in that orientation, yeah. it leads to a left or right shot on the order of 50 or 60 yards of someone at your ball speed. So pretty extreme. Yeah. The scary thing about this is if you tee it up with the arrow kind of facing sideways, yeah. it'll go perfectly straight. That's what you want. So if you're, so if you're well, playing let's a, see, Can we do that? <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah, let's... <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good, though, doesn't it? So basically, put the black and red... Right in the middle? It doesn't matter which one. That way? Yeah, one of them sideways. Uh, like... Let's do it like... Yeah, like that. I'll let oh, you straighten okay. that. There we go. Nice and straight. Look at that, dead straight. Now, it's not. <laughs> I mean, that's we, sweet though. That is, so we've got. It's only when you tee it up it, though. It's, it's be hard to do that in fairway. It's ex preferred lice yeah, ball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's when you exactly. want preferred lice, you put that up. So it's one of those that <laughs> it cr it creates a scary scenario because if you're a golfer and you tee it up that way for the first two or three holes, and then you tee it up in that bad orientation on the fourth one, mm. and it goes 50 yards left, what's the yeah. first thing you're going to think to yourself? Bad swing. Yeah. Bad swing, right? When in reality it wasn't, it was the ball that you were hitting. And really the main goal of all of this is just to A, talk about aerodynamics are a small piece of what we do. It's every single piece of the golf ball that you need to focus on. Because there are other things that if you're not paying attention to the process, you can get similar sort of performance, which is why we are so focused on every single step of the process. It's why we own all of our own plants. It's why we have so many quality checks within the plants to make sure that stuff like this doesn't end up on the golf ball. All right, question for you. For a weekend warrior like myself, does this, should you be thinking about this with a scuffed golf ball? 
Like, it's a good question. So there's there is a there is a point where if the damage is significant enough to a di to part of that dimple pattern that it can start impacting aerodynamics if it's oriented in a certain direction. We usually say, you know what, if the scuff is the size of a nickel or smaller, you're probably okay. Um, but then there's the mental side of it is yeah. if you think it's not good, mm -hmm. you should probably put another golf ball in yeah. play. All right. How's that for some science? I, yeah, I haven't had a science lesson in forever, I just still so can't believe great. how impactful the dimples are. Yeah. The first ones are the most amazing. First ones are, and, and you know what, it's one of those that it's something that we have a ton of pride in at Titleist. Mm. We have an aerodynamic group who's focused on nothing but dimple pattern design. And we talk about this in terms of paint, but it's really every step of that process. It's the type of design that you have. It's the manufacturing of the tooling. We have our own tooling. We have our own tooling shop right down the street. We make all of our own tooling. It's the manufacturing, the molding of the golf ball. It's the finishing of the golf ball. Every single one of those touch points creates uh, aerodynamics in the golf ball and it's the it's the combination of all of those things coming together that provides an optimized dimple pattern love it that's cool all right well, well thanks for the lesson yeah hey, thanks for coming out really appreciate thanks for being it. the guinea pig <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks for being so consistent yeah. it makes this makes this demonstration much easier thank you good to see you man good to see you dude yeah. thanks thanks